Leadership packs essentially did climb out of the swamp. I mean, they're not recognized by law. It's kind of a hole that is not legal in my view, but that members walk through. The old word for office accounts was slush fund. Um, and well, this is not the dominant use of leadership packs. Uh, some of it, for some of the members, clearly is being used as a slush fund. What has happened is that leadership PAC funds have essentially become the Wild West of how you want to spend your political slush fund. If you want to use it to fuel your political ambitions, you can do that. If you want to do it to have a nice lifestyle, you can use it to uh, raise money at golf tournaments and be able to play. The public might be forgiven for thinking the days are gone when lobbyists and special interests could pay for a lawmaker's cross-country golf outings. After all, both the House and Senate in 2007 responded to a spate of scandals by banning members of Congress from accepting gifts of any value from lobbyists or the companies that hire them. But those reforms preserved a major loophole. Leadership PACs, or Political Action Committees. They are, uh, in effect, a the pot of money, sometimes a very large pot of money, for members to spend as they choose. Uh, they can use it to give money to, to other members or candidates to curry favor and help out. Uh, they can use it for uh, costs related to running their office. Uh, and they, could, uh, they can use it for what are very clear abuses. In the past three election cycles, lobbyists and special interests poured $355 million into these funds. With 70% of lawmakers using them, they are now the second largest source of political money for members of Congress, from both parties. During the two-year campaign cycle that led up to the 2008 elections, less than half was passed on to candidates or party committees. The rest paid for entertainment, administrative costs, fundraising, and other categories that are so vague that it's impossible to know for sure how the money was spent. The leadership pack vehicle allows you to provide substantially more money to a member of Congress uh, and if you're a lobbyist or a special interest group and you're looking for a relationship and influence with the member of Congress, this has greatly increased the amount of money that you can provide to a member of Congress in ways, frankly, that are not authorized by the statute. There is no doubt that lobbyists are using leadership packs to buy access to power. Georgia Senator Saxby Chambliss is the top Republican on the Armed Services Committee. During the last election cycle, defense lobbyist James Irvin put $30,000 into Chambliss's leadership pack, Lockheed Martin put in $51,800, and General Dynamics added $15,000. And Irvin, a longtime Chambliss supporter, is clear about what those contributions can be used for. As he told ProPublica, I think that it's more than appropriate for Senator Chambliss to do whatever he wants with the leadership pack money. The Federal Election Commission, or FEC, which enforces federal campaign finance laws, has no rule against politicians using the money for personal purposes. Instead, the FEC is primarily concerned with enforcing rules that restrict the amount of leadership PAC money lawmakers may use for their own campaigns. The FEC plays almost no role when it comes to leadership PACs. They've declared that as long as a leadership PAC doesn't spend the money on behalf of the campaign, then it's no longer their business. So then that leaves it up to the ethics rules of the Senate and the House, and they tend to be exceedingly lax. I think there's kind of a feeling of nonchalance about the leadership PACs, partly because it's a recognition that it will be very difficult to change. Members love their leadership PACs because it is their political slush fund. So trying to find a way to have them give it up is very difficult. And, you know, that's just, it's a very uphill climb. That means the elephant, as well as the donkey, very much remain in the room.